Good afternoon, everybody. Today, you will be learning how to use Autodesk Inventor to make a dog tag. So you're going to start by looking at your desktop and finding the Autodesk Inventor icon. It should look something like what's on my screen right now. You're going to double click it, and it should begin to load. Now, it's a fairly large program, so it may take a little bit to connect to the computer. time going on it, it may say start working or start learning at about this region, but today we just want to start by making the art. So you can just go ahead and click on this icon. Now, at this point in time, it has created a start the part, you can make a 2D sketch. If you click on this Start 2D Sketch and select the XY plane, you can see here this is the YZ, and this is the X plane, so we want the XY. So we just click that and it should look something like this. Now, we're going to start with a rectangle, and it doesn't need to be any specific size, you can just get the general shape, and we will use the Dimension tool on this ribbon to select the specific dimension, and for now, it should be 2 inches long. So we'll just click 2, and then and it's 1 inch tall, so we'll just click 1, and then it automatically resizes it for you. Now, for zooming them in, because that looks a little inconvenient, you can hold down the um, roller on your mouse and get a pan, and you can scroll it to zoom in. Now that we have this box, let's give it some rounded edges. So we're going to select the fillet tool, and it'll bring up this dialog box. And it needs to be a half inch. And what this is basically going to do is round the corner. So you just type in a half inch, and then select the two side lengths that you want to fillet. So you can see that that creates that option, and then you can create another fillet, which now gives you this rounded appearance. Now, the, another option is to use the chamfer tool, which is very similar in its function, but it creates a hard edge instead of a soft edge. So if you wanted to see what like that would look like, you can just hit Control z and undo it, and then you can use the chamfer. And this doesn't really affect the model, it's more of a personal preference. So, you know, which one you like better. So that gives us more of a hard edge. And then you can fillet this corner right here in case if that's too sharp for you. So I think that's what we're going to do. And now we switch back to chamfer, from chamfer to fillet, or fillet, it doesn't really matter. And select not 0.5, because that's a big old, that's a big arc for right there. But we just want a small little radius. So let's try 0.0625. gives you a nice little round. So you just select one edge at a time, and that's all you got to do for that. But I think I'm going to need a bigger radius because that's a sharper point for this edge. So let's try 0.125, which is 8th of an inch. So I accidentally exited out of it, but you can just then you can click fillet, and I'm sure it already has that one preloaded. So then you can select the two sides and load it. There you go. Now, now you have the face outline, but um, you actually create a indented center, which you can actually write your name in, which you'll see later. So you're going to start with this, another rectangle to make that, and you can just put it anywhere, because we're going to constrain it using dimension. So just some general shape in there, and we're going to dimension by selecting these two side 
eyeball it for size. However, if you have a specific necklace in mind for you to put it on, then we can do it for personal preference there. It doesn't need to be a specific size, but um, it is nice to get it centered between the edge and the uh, little um, inset rectangle. So up here we can use these constraints to constrain it to constrain it there. So you can constrain it there with a point that you want on here, or you could constrain it to be um, along that midpoint there. And you could actually, because if you know the disk distance is 0.56, you can constrain the distance from the disk center point all the way to here. And since you know that it's 0.56 the entire way, you can just type in 0.56 divided by 2, and then it will automatically center for you. How cool is that? So, now we have the basic shape. Now we actually want to make some 3D with it. So we click Finish Sketch, and right now it's just a 2D object. And on your computer, it should change to View. You can just hold down the Shift key, and then the scrolling wheel, and you can actually Now we want to actually start making it 3D. So you select the extrude tool off the top and select the outer perimeter. And, you're in, and it defaults to an inch, but don't fret because you want it to be one eighth of an inch. And you can just go one divided by eight, or if you knew that an eighth of an inch was 1.25, you could do that as well. Now you might be saying, where did the rest of my sketch go? And it automatically deleted it because it didn't think that there was anything else for it to do. However, you still need to extrude the center part to mount your name on it. So you can go to the extrusion part and just click the little plus next to it. And now grayed out, you'll see sketch one. Now if you right click on that, you click down to visibility, which will make it visible again. And then there it is again. Now you select the extrude tool again and select that inner rectangle. Now from there, you don't want it to be an eighth of an inch, but you want it to be a sixteenth of an inch. So you can just select that, and 0.6, 1 sixteenth, and then there you have the basis of the shape of the dog tag. Now this isn't very personalized, so I would just imagine that you guys would like to get your name on it, and that's pretty cool. So you can start a new 2D sketch and select that inner face. Now, you can select the text feature right here in this ribbon, and then just click anywhere, because you can move it from there. And you can just put your name, whatever your name is. Just and that will, won't auto-align, but you can drag it however you please. So you can see that you can get it in one line, or you can get it in two lines. Basically, just however you want it to look. You could write, you could write multiple lines. You could really just however you want it to look. But this text is just 2D. It's just a picture. But you click Finish Sketch, and now you can actually extrude the text. You can just select the text where it highlights, and then it'll automatically go to the last extrusion that you use, which is 1 16th, which is now the height of that lettering. And you might say, oh, well, that sketch is getting kind of ugly now, so you can actually go back to visibility and deselect it. And here you have a 3D model of your dog tag. But uh, well, you guys will be 3D printing it on our 3D printer, so you guys, or not everybody will be using a 3D printer, but um, you can export it after you save it. You can not export it, excuse me. Uh, you go to print and then 3D print preview. Now, this is just giving you a rough preview of how it's going to look. So you could say, okay, maybe I want to change something, then you can go back into the model. And 
go back to where we were, and then go to print, send, send to a 3D print server. And what that basically does is give you the option to export it as an STL file. And you can use this STL file in most 3D printers. That's very standard dimension. And you can see the scales. Here you have the height, which is the width, essentially, which is one inches. And you can see the length, which is just shy of two inches. And that's shy by a hundredth of an inch. And that is going to be, that's not going to be interpreted by the 3D printer. The 3D printer is not precise. So you can just go ahead and click OK. And then it'll go, you can name it whatever you want. And then you just save it. And it's going to bring up this link, which is getting it to, by this Autodesk trying to sell you the 3D printing service, which you do not want. So you can just exit out of that window. And then take that STL file that you just saved in the computer and then load it up to the 3D printer via an SD card through the whatever environment your 3D printer has. Um, I hope this helps. Um, if you leave a comment, I 